This is Vice by Miranda Lambert. Walk me through that song, that creation of it. Josh and I got set up to write with her. I do know she walked in with a cooler. Yeah. And she, and it was the morning that the news had broke that she was getting a divorce. Hey everyone, it's your girl, Emily Curl with iHeartRadio. And today we're hanging out with Grammy award-winning songwriters. We have Josh Osborne and Shane McAnally here with us. Hi, you two, welcome. Hey. Hi, hi. It's good to see you both. And this is especially exciting for me because you two have written some of my favorite songs ever. And I've put a few on this wheel behind me. So what we're gonna do today is play our wheel of stories. I'm gonna spin the wheel. We're gonna land on a song and you can tell me a little bit about the creation of that song, behind the scenes, everything that went down. Does that sound good? That's great. This is actually really cool. That wheel looks amazing. Yeah. Before we dive into that, I want to talk about the dynamic duo that is the two of you. And you know, these years you've had collaborating on so many amazing songs. Tell me a little bit, what do you think makes it so special about your creative relationship that just works so well? I, I mean, I think the main thing that people don't know is we never write a song in the room together. We, um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, I was <laughs> like, kidding. wait, what? <laughs> This is actually the first time y'all have met right now. Yes, we, I had no idea what he looked like. I'm slightly underwhelmed. So. <laughs> um, this is what it's like, okay, no, it's, Emily? Um, he makes you think he's going to say something really kind. He builds you up. You feel great. And then he reminds you that you're nothing. Humbles you right back down. I think we come so much from the same place, like musically what we love. And um, we kind of grew up in the same small town, but in different states. Like I grew up in a little town in Kentucky that was very similar to the, the town Shane grew up with in Texas. And I think we grew up loving the same kinds of music and it drew us together. And, and I feel like that's a part of why we find so much common ground together. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, there's also just a, there's this sort of unknown magic that you have with very few people on the earth. Mm. And it's you a soulmate of sorts i mean it's just like wh when you're with someone that you're like you feel like they are that somehow they're part of mm -hmm. you and mm -hmm. um that really has been the feeling with the two of us since yeah. early on like we had been you know like these counterparts that were sort of waiting to find each other on a spiritual level it's always felt like that i'm mm -hmm. so i've always been so grateful that we and, and i think it was inevitable that we found each other but i'm so grateful that we did because to imagine my career without him, I mean, it's it would look so different. I've often made the joke about like in Top Gun, when Meg Ryan says to Maverick, like, he would have flown without you, he would have hated it, but he would have done it. <laughs> that That is how I feel about our relationship. Wow. I don't think I would have a career if, if I hadn't met Shane. Like, um, this is such a, a hard business because the hardest thing is find somebody that believes in you. That's not your your wife or your husband or your, you know, it's finding someone that becomes your champion. And, and Shane was definitely that for me. And and um, yeah, I wouldn't have a career if I hadn't met Shane. So I think I'm glad he feels like it was meant to be because if it hadn't happened, I don't, I, don't, I think I'd be back um, teaching school in Kentucky or something. So that would be horrible for those kids. <laughs> <laughs> now, when and where was that first meeting? Well, we met on Grindr originally. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> I swear none of this was rehearsed. We, we, um, we were just set up to write and uh, Shane had a song that uh, had just been recorded by Leanne Womack that had just come out. And I remembered Shane, uh, no joke, he's gonna laugh about it, but I remember Shane had a record deal on Curve. And I remember when I first came to town, he was an artist that had a record deal. And my publisher at the time said, would you be interested in writing with Shane McAnally? He has a new song coming out with Leanne Womack, and I think he's really great. And I was like, the guy that was on Curb is writing songs. And she was like, yes. And I was like, yes, I would love to, to do this. Yeah, and I don't. I remember the first song we wrote together. Mm -hmm. It wasn't great, but it the we, yeah, we and there was that. another person in the room the first time we met, and it was one of those okay. things like this. There is something here, mm -hmm. and so thank God we. You know, carry so you all got rid of the other person. Yes. <laughs> you just got rid of the zoo. Sort of. I mean, I don't think it was intentional as much. It was like this was just we just hit it off. All right, here we go. Let's do that first spin. Here. Yes. Okay, this one's actually one of my favorites. This is Vice by Miranda Lambert. Such an incredible song. Walk me through that song, that creation of it. I had had songs recorded by Miranda. We, but we had never written and. Josh and I got set up to write with her. That I do know she walked in with a cooler. Yeah. And she, and it was the morning 
yeah. that the news had broke that she was getting a divorce. Now it hadn't broken yet. It hadn't broken. That's, that's right. It. Yeah. But it she, was the day. It was. Oh my it, gosh. It was the day. It they was filed. the day yeah. they filed. Yeah. And she, of course, they knew it was coming. Right. But the world didn't. Right. And so I remember saying mm -hmm. to her, like, I cannot believe you came. Yeah. Like, thank you for yeah, even he, showing up. He said, up. do you need to take the day off? Like, did you just want to talk? Like, what? Because she said, look, this is going to come out and you guys are going to hear about it. And you might as well hear it from me. But Oh, yeah, because she said, I don't want you to wonder right. why I didn't well, say something. I, yeah, she said, I don't want you to wonder. And and she said, uh, Blake and I just filed for divorce. And we were kind of like, what? Yeah. You know, we were um, shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Because what do you do in that situation, too? Are you like, or do you want to write a song? What do we do now? Yeah. We're still trying to make money at that point. Yeah. So we were like, yeah, let's keep going. No, Shane said to her, like, do you need some time? Like, do you need a, you know, because this, this is big news. And she was a trooper. She was like, no, I, I'm going to work my way through this. I think this is the best thing I could do right now. We write a song. And that's what we wrote. Mm -hmm. And there was so much uh, vulnerability in the mm -hmm. lyric. And I kept saying to her, you won't say this. Right. I, I was like, we got to change that line. You won't say it. And she was like, yes, I will. Yeah. And she did. She didn't yeah. change any of it. Was there one line in particular that you were like, this is the one? I think it was the lyric um, about going home with your shoes yeah, in your hands. Yeah, that was right. Um, yeah. Like the walk of shame. Like yeah. I, I'd yeah. heard that in third person, but I'd never heard someone sing it first As if person. they were doing it, yeah. yeah. She's pretty fearless. Yeah, she and is. She said, I'm... Uh, she said, no, I'll say it. I also love the line too. It's, I'm going to go wear my reputation, don't precede me. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's probably my favorite line of any song we've written. I mean, that lyric, it, it, it is so perfectly phrased mm -hmm. and such a cool way to twist that. Her voice on it is yeah. magic. That's a great story. Interesting to know how that was created. Okay, are we ready to spin again? Sure. Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, okay, this is another fun one. I was on a boat that day, Old Dominion. I love yeah. this song. This is a fun one. Tell me about this one. So last year during the, um, in 2020 with all the pandemic stuff, people weren't getting together and writing as much. Everything was was real like shut down. And uh, Old Dominion decided to go, they wanted to go hold up in a studio, try to write and record a whole album. Like just see what they could do. Actually, I think you guys went there with the thought of writing a few songs right. and recording some that were already written. They brought a couple of different writers that had worked with them in the past. Like uh, I, I went for a few days, Matt Jenkins went for a few days just to see what they could come up with. And uh, Shane was obviously there the whole time so he produced the album, but they got on this creative role of just like, oh my gosh, we wrote a song and they went up and recorded it. And then by the time I got there, you guys were already like three songs into an album. Yeah. Like they had already written and recorded three songs. And so we wrote a couple of songs that were, they were fun. And then it was like the third day uh, that I was there, Brad Tersey, they started throwing around ideas and they were like, you know, we've had this goofy title forever. Like, but he had a real like different music for it. And it was more like, like high strung nautical sounding thing. Yeah. They were like, yeah, it's probably too goofy. And both of us were like, that's amazing title. I mean, yeah. just the, it's already funny. Like just the title, I was on a boat that day and we just started messing with it. And I and I want to say you were the one that said it needs to feel fun and happy. It needs to be stomp clappy and strummy mm -hmm. and like get it out of the feeling like you're at the beach or whatever. Like it needs to just feel more sing along and more like a crowd. And we had the most fun writing that song. Okay, let's spin it because there's a lot more to get through. Oh, this is another fun one. Come over Kenny Chesney. Oh, why don't you start this one? All right. This is definitely uh, a Sam Hunt special. <laughs> yeah. When when Josh and I started writing with Sam, he, he brought something that neither one of us had ever heard. I would say the first few songs we wrote were more experimental than mm -hmm. anything. It was almost like we were just throwing things against the wall because he would do anything. Yeah. And if we, you know, I remember we wrote a song where the tempo changed yeah. in the middle of the song. The time signature changed. Yeah. Like, he would just be like, well, let's see. Right. And Come Over is one of the no most normal songs we wrote the first right. year. Yeah. He had a, a an idea of that mm -hmm. song. Um, there was a Nelly song, uh, Over and Over. Oh, that's right. And yeah. it had a rhythm behind yeah. it that he was like, I, I would like to write something with a rhythm like this. I mean, we ended up getting so far off of it, but that's mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, something that inspires you. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't even remember where we right, started. Right, right. We, you know, that song, when you sit with a guitar, it's not mm -hmm. structurally strange. It's no. just got a great melody. The, the magic of that song was, it just sounded like a normal hook, like, mm -hmm. you know, come over. And nobody really realizes that that's not enough. It wouldn't be what it is right. if you hadn't repeated come over. 
come over, come over, come over, come over. Yeah. And he did that when we were making the work tape. Mm -hmm. in the, on the outro. On the outro, yeah. Sam was just singing and he just goes, come over, come over, come over, come over. And he wasn't even doing it, it just, right. and it was like, yeah. I stopped playing the guitar and he, he looked at me and was like, what was that? And Sam, in the most Sam way goes, I, mean, I was just doing like a the, the thing. If it's distracting or anything, I mean, I, I won't do it again. Right. And and he Shane, was apologizing. And Shane said, "No, you have to do that <laughs> no, like every that. time." You know, again, those are the little magic moments that mm -hmm. I want. I, I would say that one of the things that Josh and I are really good at is that we wait for those things. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you'll start a song and you'll think, "Is this is this landing?" We just wait for that moment where something happens that particular day, it happened at the very end of the ride. Let's spin again, because I want to get to a few more. <laughs> Are we ready? Here we go. Hold on. This seems, how <laughs> <Wait. laughs> I'm still cheating, hold on, I'm still, oh my gosh, okay, Silver Linings, Casey Musgraves. Oh, I can't believe you ended on that one. Wow. What, a, what a strange coincidence, we just. <laughs> so wild. <laughs> No, okay, I had to cheat because I'm not joking when I say this is one of my favorite country songs ever. Oh, wow. So selfishly, I wanted to land on this one. Yeah. So tell me a little bit. You're surprised. Why are you surprised, Josh? I just don't hear anything about this song. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. It's like, don't do me like that. I'm 100% <laughs> sure I've never heard this song. <laughs> no, um, that was like the last song we wrote for that album? Mm -hmm. Or the next to last? It was, was, I know we went in and at the, I don't remember which was written last, but I know we went in and cut two more songs and it was mm -hmm. Follow Your Arrow and Silver, yeah. Silver Linings. Yeah, we just got together with her to write on Silver Linings and I, I will be honest with you, I don't, where did that title come from? I thought she wanted to write a song called Silver Linings. Yes. My memory is that you came up, I know you came up with that feel, but I thought we were trying to think, how do you make Silver Linings special? And I, 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 yeah. I really right, feel like that was you. I that. mean, I feel like a lot of it was something that that Josh put together in that it's so special. I mean, that is a line. I, I just listened to that song recently. It's funny you'd bring it up, but I'm so like that song really is underrated because it, mm -hmm. it, because it did just end up being an album cut, luckily on an album that got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. But but the line, if you're ever going to see a silver lining, you got to stay in the rain. I don't remember how exactly yeah, that's right, phrased, right. but that is it's like yes that right. that's a real thing that we need to hear yeah. yeah i'll tell you the line that does me in is if you want to find a head to fit your shoulder you're gonna to have to go to the dance no joke that line we had so much debate about that in the room because it was is anybody gonna understand what this means like we didn't know we finally settled on i think it was casey said well, I know what it means, so other people will know what it means. And yeah. we put, I, but I remember the debate over that line because we loved it. We felt the emotion of that line, but you also have to pay respect to the listener. As a writer or an artist, you never want to talk down to your audience, but you also don't want to talk over their heads either. So it was sort of like this discussion of, are people going to understand what we're trying to say? And Casey said, I get it. So I think other people will too. That is fascinating. I cannot believe that. <laughs> <laughs> the odds, that's the one that I love the most. That's so funny. One thing I will say about that song, I know that until the very last second the decision had to be made, that song was going to be the second single. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that it wasn't was because it had a similar message to Merry Go Round. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, Casey knew she had to get to Follow Your Arrow. Right. And that song is very similar. So yeah, she knew that Follow Your Arrow would have to come at some point. Yeah. And she was afraid that if she put out Silver Lining, they it wouldn't- It would be a little too close. Arrow, Interesting. Right? I still, I honestly wish that that song had been the second single because it's just such a special song. But I also really understand the logic when you're trying to Set show- a song. And right. it's a brand new artist. You're yeah. trying to show different sides. Right. Yeah. Okay, do we have time? I think we have time for one more if you guys are down. Sure. Yeah? Okay. Can you wait to see where the wheel randomly lands? <laughs> I know, you know I want to cheat it, but I'm trying not to. Okay, this is another fun one. Chainsaw the Van Perry. Oh, oh, wow. Man, these are, you're going deep. You are, um, yeah. That was another, that was a Matthew Ramsey special though. Yeah. That was his title that he kept wanting to write a song called Chainsaw. Yeah. We got into the whole, the heaviness of that song, which is so interesting. The Van Perry cut of it is really cool. And it's like a very like, it's the way the Van Perry needs to do a song like that. But the original version of how we wrote that song, uh, and Old Dominion did a version of it originally, and when we did our original demo, it's it's this close to being heavy metal. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like it's the guitars are so loud, and it's that. 
nah, nah, nah. I, I do remember in the studio doing the demo for Chainsaw, Shane kept saying, that guitar needs to sound like a chainsaw. Yeah. And the guy would like play it a little bit lighter and he would go, like a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy would have to like More. just keep making it heavy, heavier. It's such a hard title. Right. And it is really hard to imagine anybody else but the Van Perry saying that. Right. They were doing things that were, you know, just a little quirky. Adventurous, yeah. Quirky. Yeah, and they're fun. That, that song just, I, the fact that we wrote a song called Chainsaw and we're able to hook it <laughs> is, I mean, I, that one I'm really proud of. I, me too. Uh, yeah. The lyrics that, that song, the, it's hard to bury the hatchet holding the chainsaw. Uh, like, there's so many lines in that song that we were so proud of and we were like, no one's ever going to hear it, but we're proud of it. Yeah. Like, because we thought it was so strange. And meanwhile, it's on our wheel <laughs> um okay actually guys if if you don't mind can we do one more one last one sure. yeah then sure. i promise i'll let you go okay so i might have to cheat this one slightly too whoa it's 23 by sam oh, hunt wow. <laughs> Let's talk about 23 by Sam Hunt, one of his newest releases. Again, love this song. Tell me a little bit about where the inspiration came from for this one. Well, it started out as a track that Chris LaCourt mm -hmm. had, and the track is stunning. It's pretty much what you hear now on the, the final record. Um, Sam, we did a, a little writer's trip. Uh, I guess this was last year, too, during yeah. COVID. Mm -hmm. Shane has a place down in Florida. Uh, Sam and I flew down to Florida and uh, to stay with Shane for a few days and try to write some songs. And Sam had gotten some tracks from a few different writers just to see if anything inspired us. And Chris had sent uh, the track for 23 just as one of about 15 tracks he sent with Sam. Sam played it for us. And I mean, instantly we were both knocked out because we love that major seven, 70s. 70s, the groove of it. Like it's one of those songs that like the second we heard Chris's track, I was ready to get in a car and just ride along the beach without words on it. There was already a song there. It was scary to yeah. mess yeah. with it. It sounded almost like it worked as an instrumental. Mm -hmm. it, it was did. just so beautiful. Well, Shane has a, this cool Bronco down there. So I was like, let's just get in the Bronco <laughs> and ride around and listen to this track. Yeah. Because it's so, it feels exactly like what you hear on the radio. But before that, we had started a song with Sam called 22. Now this was years prior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it was prior to even, I think, Taylor Swift's song or whatever. Like, and so, but then of course, Taylor had a song called 22 and we were all talking about it. And Sam said, you know, I still love that idea. And Shane was like, yeah, but I don't think 22 is right. And then we just were like, I wonder what would work. How about 23? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's funny, the things that seem so obvious or simple, yes. but we had all these discussions in the room of like, how the age 23 is actually the perfect age because you're just out of college. You're not quite grown up. You're right in that middle of growing up and you can't say you're a kid in college and you can't really say you're an adult with a job. You're right in the middle of that. And so it became like, luckily for us, I think it's the perfect age and it was able to put more focus on the girl in the song. And it rhymed. And that it was rhymed. the thing that I'll never be 23. It was like, how did we not do this before? Exactly. It was there, we just missed it. And that's my most listened to song of, of all time. I mean, I think I've listened to it not just more than any song I've ever written. I think I've listened to it more than any song ever written. So it's literally one of your favorites ever. Yeah. It, it might be my favorite ever. I mean, I, I told Josh it's and Sam that yeah, it's, it just, it speaks to me musically and thematically so much. It's um it's one of the songs that like, there's very few songs that you can take yourself out of the creation and enjoy it like a fan. Mm -hmm. And that song, uh, it it gives me chills every time. It's just there's something about that character, mm -hmm. and the uh, you can do this and you can do this, but you'll never be you'll never get that back. And right. that just uh, it's just okay. I'm crying. You know something Shane just said that is very funny and interesting with Sam is he can see where the song's going before it's done, and I, he did that with Body Like a Back Road. We had that song kind of half written, and he was like, "This is the single we're coming with after Mon of Allo. He did that with Hard to Forget. Yeah, when we were working on mm. that, as weird as that song was with the spliced track and all that, we didn't even have a full chorus written on it. And he said, "This is next. This is what's going to come next." Oh my gosh, this has been so insightful, <laughs> Josh and Shane. Not only are you guys like such a hoot, but I feel like I really could spin this wheel all day, truly. <laughs> well, we would let you spin it all day, but we actually are going yeah, to write to hopefully get another one on there. We're trying to get another one on the wheel. But Josh and Shane, thank you guys so much. Truly, it was such a pleasure meeting you both. And thank you for playing our game and for being here at iHeart. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching our Wheel of Stories with songwriters Josh Osborne and Shane McAnally. Make sure you stream the new song by Sam Hunt, 23, written by Shane and Josh. And of course, all of their other music on iHeart Country. And we'll see you next time.